Hello, my name is Patrick with Zorcom. Uh, the purpose of this video is to go over the system settings module and complete PBX version 5. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first things first, uh, as you can see here, I'm running the virtual machine uh, image of complete PBX version 5 and VMware. Uh, first thing to note is what the IP of the system is. So at first login, you should be able to see uh, the IP address, as you see here, 192.168.171.133. Uh, but in case it doesn't show, we could run the Linux command IPA. Go ahead and scroll this down a little bit. And as you can see here, uh, for the Ethernet adapter of ETH0, we have a IP address of 192.168.171.133. Um, in case you're not running the virtual uh, image and you're running on Zorcom hardware, uh, if you do not know the IP of the system prior to trying to log into the web user interface, you will need to connect to local console, which is a monitor and keyboard hooked up, and run the same command after logging in, which is IPA. So as we see, we know the IP of the system. Let's go ahead and move on over to the system. Uh, same IP up here. Let's go ahead and log in using the default user credentials. And this brings us to the dashboard. Okay, uh, system settings can be found in admin system settings and is comprised of four modules. Uh, system miscellaneous, network settings, email settings, and DHCP settings. Uh, so let's first go over system miscellaneous. Uh, system miscellaneous is exactly as it's uh, explained, it's miscellaneous system settings. Uh, so in the general area we have power off and restart. This gives us the ability to uh, restart the server or power it off from the GUI. Uh, we have the time section here. This is for setting the time zones and the time of the system. We have notifications, which is for setting uh, notification email addresses and also how we want those email address or those emails to be presented. Well, where we want them to be presented from. Um, and lastly is storage. Uh, storage are for two parts. One, to see the particular usage percentage of partitions or drives on the system. And also what percentage thresholds for the notification emails to be sent. So let's go ahead and start in general here. Um, as mentioned before, power off and restart. Let's go ahead and set the time. Uh, as we see here, the system set for uh, GMT time of zero. Uh, this is incorrect as I'm in the central time zone uh, in Tennessee. So let's go ahead and grab the correct time zone here, which is the same time as Chicago in my particular area. We'll go ahead and click save. As we see up here, the red arrows came up for reload. So let's go ahead and reload. So we've applied those settings. Come back to time. Uh, we see now we have the correct time zone. Um, yes, I would like to use NTP. NTP is network time protocol. Uh, essentially, it's a list of servers to check time with. Uh, I am fine with the default time servers. But if you have local NTP servers or wish to use others, you can uh, set these here. So let's go ahead and verify the status of the system. Um, so yes, we're using Central Daylight Time. Uh, it's roughly almost 2 p.m. here, so this is correct. Um, minus 5 uh, GMT time, yes, that's correct. And as we can see here, not only has it been enabled and synchronized with uh, network time servers over here, um, but it's also activated Daylight Savings Time and with the correct times and dates for Daylight Saving to happen. So one final save here, just to make sure everything's all good. We'll do a reload and go to the next section. Next section is notifications. And these are uh, email addresses that we're going to send notification emails to. So in case uh, we've set a storage threshold of, let's say, 75% for this one. And for the boot partition, I don't want to know unless it's up over 90%. So we'll go ahead and save those. 
And now what happens is if the hard drive is full to 75% on this partition or 90% on this partition, we're going to get an email address to the at email address that's uh, put in here. So let's go ahead and put in my email address. Okay. Uh, intrusion emails are for anything that gets banned on the system or has an abnormal amount of login attempts. Uh, you'll receive an email with its IP stating as such. Um, and abnormal call volume, the same thing. If uh, certain times of the day you are getting way too many calls than the system normally sees, uh, it will send an email out for that. And I'm going to go ahead and reconfigure the from address to be notifications at zorcom.local. So I know from a glance when I receive that email that it's a, just a notification email. It's not somebody sending me anything or like a voicemail to email or anything like that. So that concludes the system miscellaneous. Uh, we'll go to network settings next. Uh, network settings, pretty self-explanatory. This is where you set up your network settings. So if you wanted to change your host name, such as zorcom.local, that can be done here. Uh, currently, this system is set up for DHCP. I'm not going to change that, but if you wanted to set static IPs or static addressing and anything else that you'd like to do here, this is where it would be done. Also, uh, if you would wish to create virtual addresses or things like that. Um, as you can see here, these are the current network adapters that are active on the system and inactive. Um, as this is a virtual machine, we only have the one wired connections. But if you had multiple uh, Ethernet adapters, um, those would show up here also. Going to the next section is email settings. Um, so you have three choices here. You have you use your built-in email server. We could use the external email server. Um, and this is why I say there's three choices because we've already done all the heavy lifting for Gmail. Uh, with Gmail, it's as simple as just enter your Gmail address and password. And emails from the system will be sent from the Gmail address you specify. Uh, I highly recommend using this particular method of setting up uh, voicemail to email and things like that. Uh, but if you have your own uh, internal mail server, uh, you can relay through this. Um, making the correct settings as per your IT administrators or the, the local IT staff of the on-site premise. Uh, this particular exercise we're just going to use the built-in mail server. Um, I've just set a very simple host name um, and domain name. Uh, this is not recommended for anything other than testing. Uh, the main reason is, is if you do not use a fully qualified domain name on a mail server, uh, it will be blocked as a spam email server. So very important to make sure that you use a fully qualified domain name if you wish to use the PBX as your mail server. So let me go ahead and send a test email here. Okay, we see it's queued for sending. And if we look at the log here, we can see that, uh, yeah, it sent the email and then removed it from the server. So the email server is working as intended. And we'll just go ahead and do a quick save just to make sure. Okay, and as we can see here, I got an email saying, hey, um, it's from notifications at zorcom.local, and it says our test email worked. So that's good. Every, everything's set up correctly. Uh, last part of this is DHCP settings. Uh, this is if you want the server to be the DHCP server. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but just note that... Uh, any settings related to creating the, having the PBX be the DHCP server, you would first have to enable and then set all this up. All right, thank you for your time and have a nice day.